Good morning. Welcome to Talk in Maine with Tom Saviello. And I'm one of the last bow tie boys that are around. But I have a special guest today, Richard Corey. Richard, thank you so much for coming oh, in. Oh, th thanks for having me come in, Tom. We're going to talk about the Wilton area and its history. And I, But I want to thank you for your patience because you and I had scheduled this show for a year ago. Yes, a year ago in April. Uh, yeah. April, and the pandemic hit and we couldn't do it. No. But Richard, tell us a little bit about you first before we talk about the history of, of the Wilton area. Okay, uh, I was born and raised right in East Wilton and educated in the uh, Wilton school systems and, and Mount Blue and stuff. And uh, I graduated from UMF here. And I, 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 my claim is I've lived on the same street my entire life. And you're still living. So and I'm good. still living there. Yeah, so Temple, Temple Road in East Wilton, I've lived there all, all my life. And uh, wow. I just love the area. And I just uh, love, the, love history, love history, love the local history. So how did you start? I mean, you say you love it, but what would you start as a young person, kind of digging around? Oh no, um, I did. I did have a background in archaeology, basically, as far as later on in life. But really, the 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 very beginnings was just really local local history, and it was uh, from teachers that I had early on. Uh, I had Edna Buchanan, and I had uh, Dorothy uh, Weeks, and. Um, Another teacher that I had in high school just cemented my love of history was Larry Violet in, in, in high school. So I really thank those individuals for their uh, impact on me as far as liking history. So just to, just to kind of do a little bit of early, kind of early Wilton, you started at the little school that now is uh, the uh, Community Concepts. Yes, yes. I, um, I'm very fortunate. It was a four-room schoolhouse. And I graduated from the sixth grade there in 1969. And it was, that was the last year that that building was open. So I went there from the kindergarten all the way through the sixth grade and uh, in a four-room schoolhouse. And did you go to the central school next or right to... Uh, no, it went to Wilton Academy. Wilton Academy. And that's where the junior high was at, at that time. So it was really kind of neat. It, you know, and... and Growing up in a small town like that, you know, I went home for lunch. Yeah, yeah. I went home for lunch and uh, would, would cut through uh, where the old chicken house was and walk home and then come back. And uh, I, I loved to ride, ride uh, I never got to ride on a school bus until I went to Wilton. Oh, well, it's just interesting, just a side light, New Jersey, where I grew up. Yeah. The school I went to was Annecy Scott School. It was an old wooden structure that it did have more than four, it had about 12 classrooms in it. Um, and I walked to school every day. I used to think it was miles and miles, but when I went down there for one of my reunions, it was like five minutes away. Mm -hmm. um, and, but it was uphill both ways, I can tell yeah. you that. Uh, and just so I, I understand the experience, and yep. there were special teachers there that made a difference in my life. Oh, definitely. So, so tell us, so we're going to talk about what Wilton and East Wilton was like or the area was like before we got, white man got here. Actually, yeah, right. So, Tom, who do you think was some of the first settlers of East Wilton would it be? There's a debate as whether it was, it was Joshua Green or whether it was Samuel Butterfield. Oh, okay. Now, you're talking about those guys. I'm telling you, I'm going back to even the yeah. Mr. Pierpole. It was some yeah, of his relatives. definitely. Well, that, that don't know, that was the Indian uh, or right. the Native American that lived in the strong area for years. Mm -hmm. And uh that, um, that they named an apple after him, the Pierre Pol or the Pierre Pol apple business. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but um, uh, so most of the time when people think of who the first settlers were, and they really don't think of the native uh, populations, but we're lucky that we have some evidence in the Wilton area of native populations there. And we, uh, we found, okay, years ago in 1890, the Sewell family found this on the shores of Wilson Lake. Uh -huh. It was probably along the beach area. And this is a ground stone gouge that was probably uh, the archaic period. This could be as old as 6,000 years. Wow. 6,000 to 3,000 years old. Now this would have been a valued tool because it was so hard uh, so, took a long that, time to make. Andre may be able to uh, come in a little closer on that particular one with the camera. Uh, so they they were probably the first settlers, uh, but they weren't here probably year round. They were probably uh, seasonal campsites and abstraction sites or, or hunting sites. They were like nomadic. If I remember, exactly. when Emma came on the show, she said that first group of tribes were more that they found a place, they'd be comfortable exactly. for a little bit, and then they moved on to the next. They place. kind of followed the resources yep. and stuff. So, so 
that was um, that was some of the earlier settlers and uh, well, the, the earliest people that were here. And uh, Wilton does not have the uh, real large archaeological sites that maybe Farmington had, the villages and stuff like that, the village down to Farmington Falls, or in Canton. Canton, uh, Canton Point had a, a large village at one time too. So, um, so Canton Point, just as a satellite, when I was with IP, we had to do a archaeological study as part of our mm -hmm. uh, problem of re of relicensing the hydros that were there. Yes. And we actually did a dig at Canton Point. Yes. And we found pipes, the little white oh, piece yeah, definitely. of pipe. Yep. Yep. We found a 1710 Phillips head Spanish coin. Wow. Uh, and we found a whole bunch of artifacts. Mm -hmm. and, and every time I drive down to Canton Point, I can picture a village being there because yep. it's flat. It probably was that way. Yep. Uh, our rendezvous where they all came in in the springtime. Yep. or the, Rock Amico. Uh, it was called Rock Amico. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, that's the, the, the village name. And the, the early... Uh, history of the area basically says that when the white people came into the area, there was over 600 acres of cor corn being grown in that area. Wow. So, and it's still a lot of corn. Yeah, definitely. Right? So, wow. wow. So, um, I was going to talk about uh, the really very beginnings of this area before the people came up here to settle Farmington and Wilton, East Wilton and stuff like that. It was a very much a contested area um, during around the early 1700s as far as we were at a uh, war with uh, the French and the French and Indian Wars. There was a series of wars starting right around 1700 and that lasted until 1763 at the end of the French and Indian Wars. And we're, it was two colonial powers kind of like battling for this area in the New World. And so uh, there was all kinds of skirmishes that were happening. And the this area in Sandy River area, including Farmington, Wilton, really was not open for settlement until after the French and Indian Wars because there was so much excitement of uh, the French would excite the Indians to go visit the English down in Richmond and it burned them and then the English would do the same, go up to Norwalk and uh, attack Father Rail and stuff yeah. like that. So um, it was really kind of a... a, a Pretty nasty area. N nasty area. And they used the K Kennebec River as the boundary line between uh, French, Arcadia, and the English s oh, settlement. No so, oh, wow. so that was a kind of really kind of neat. So that was really, to go back to like Wilton, um, the beginnings of Wilton, there was a Captain William Ting. Yeah, Tingtown. Uh, yeah, Tingtown. In 1702 and 1703, he led, he led a band of soldiers up to the lake regions of uh, New, Hampshire New Hampshire in order to uh, attack uh, an Indian named Harry, uh, Captain uh, Harry, and he, they were doing it for retaliation because the Indians were kind of attacking a lot of the areas on the, the frontier along the Merrimack River uh, in the uh, area called Dunstable, and that's where a lot of the people came from that settled the Sandy River Valley, Farmington, and Wilton. So that was that. So he, as a, a, a reward for his services during that Indian raid, when he went and he actually killed this Indian, and, and he, he and his company was awarded some grants. Land grants. Land grants. And so in 1735, they ultimately were given some land grants. But, and so they... And it was in the Manchester area, Manchester, Maine, yeah. no, Manchester, New Hampshire. Oh, Manchester, New Hampshire. In okay. 1735, and then the governor of the governor that gave that was uh, Belcher, Governor Belcher, from Massachusetts Bay Colony. And it wasn't until like 1741 that New Hampshire was ruled by another different governor, uh, Wentworth, and there was kind of contested as far as they were giving out different land grants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was contested land grants. So here, the Captain King. King's uh, company was settled in the Manchester area and had built sawmills and houses and stuff like that for a few years. And then they had to leave. Oh, boy. They had to leave. So, and that, that was called Tingstown. That was called Tingstown. That too. was, so that's ultimately why. So... What happens right after that in 1741, we had a lot of the French and Indian Wars that really sprung up. So the frontier was really not an area to be uh, 
trying to establish a homestead or a town. So it was later on um, that it was, we had the French and Indian War that didn't settle until 1763. Right. And then what after that? The Revolutionary War. Right, right. And that didn't end until, what was it, around 1785 or 84? 84, 84, 84, 84, 84, 84. Yeah, yeah. So that was when basically um, the area was regranted as far as the Captain Ting's ancestors now yeah. were, 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 re, uh, were they reapplied because they had been taken away down in Manchester. So that was really kind of the very beginnings of, of Wilton. So, Ting, so Captain Ting never really lived in Wilton. No, he never so did. Just because he was there, because he got the property for his work, mm -hmm. got kicked out, but when he, yep. with the Revolutionary War comes to an end, his family now says, it's, wait a minute, our captain, our family... It's all the heirs. Is, yep. is all the heirs. We deserve a piece of property that he was supposed exactly. to have. Exactly. And they gave them the Wilton, East Wilton yes. area on the Yes, Sunday. yeah. That was right around 1784, you know, when some of the people met down in, uh, outside of Boston, out in a town called uh, uh, Chelmsford, and they basically they set up the proprietorship of Tings Township. Okay. And they applied to the, the state or the colony uh, to, for, for that new grant. And so it was awarded. And then ultimately... Um, Farmington had already been settled for a few years. So the proprietor uh, uh, from Massachusetts asked a couple people that were living over here in Farmington at the time, because the first settlement here roughly started around 1780, and uh, Solomon Adams and Samuel Butterfield was asked to go over and to check out the land over in Wilton to see if it would be okay, be suitable for agriculture. Uh, agriculture and suitable for um, settlement. So that was that was uh, basically um, looked okay for the proprietorships, and so they set up uh, the land for was for, was for sale. As for some of the the lots were were given to the ancestors, and the others were actually so, opened up for wow. for sale and stuff. So Samuel Butterfield actually had the chance to come over and check out the area, Samuel and Solomon Adams. So Solomon uh, ends up uh, developing a lot with a, a cotton mill in 1780, uh, excuse me, 1810, uh, where Bryce Weeks lives down on the road uh, yeah, stream. Yeah. That was a, a cotton mill there for about four or five years. No kidding. And then um, Samuel Butterfield is really credited for being the first settler of, of Wilton, first Euro-American settler. So to and give everybody perspective, Bryce lives on McGrath Road. I think it's McGrath Road. No, uh, oh, that's... Um, not McGrath Road. It's uh, Milkrillis Corner. Milkrillis Corner, I'm yes, sorry. Yes, right, 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 right behind right, the bowling alley, right, yeah, right, right, right out through there, right by the bridge. So yeah. there was a cotton mill there. Yeah, a cotton mill. So they bring the cotton up from the south and refine it into textile? Yes. Yep. Wow. Yeah, uh, uh, so... We'll, we'll go back to him later on, but let's, uh, Samuel Adam, yeah. uh, no, Samuel, uh, Samuel Butterfield actually lived over here uh, by the Butterf what I call the Butterfield house that's uh, right beside the Chinese restaurant. The one they're going to take down. Yes. Yeah, that's the that, oldest building in Farmington. That's correct. That uh, He lived there with his, his father was also a Samuel Butterfield. But Samuel was really a genius as far as to how to operate mills and stuff like that. So he came over to Wilton, uh, East Wilton, in 1789. And he started a, a grist mill and a sawmill there. In East Wilton. In East Wilton, right, right there by the falls. So okay. that's why I, I really call it uh, Butterfield Falls. Yeah. And in a sense, as far as really, as far as uh, the early name of Wilson Lake was actually called Butterfield Lake. Oh, one. no kidding. Yeah. Huh. So because of the... Uh, but they oh. hadn't really dammed it, so it was a lake all along, but it was probably not as big as it is now. That's, that's correct. That's correct. Uh, so Samuel was in um, um, East Wilton, 1780, and had the mill started and stuff like that. So he, he got um, an idea to go to Wilton and, and to develop the water power there in East, at the outlet of Wilson Lake. So, wow. So, the, so, okay, so in East Wilton, they set up at the falls that's there. So that's they correct. would have been on either side of that, would have been the water-driven 
gristmill, mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. And then, then Wilton, they set up something similar at uh, yeah, the they, outlet? Yeah, they did, well, a little bit, but they, there was more uh, canals and stuff oh, okay. that went, yeah, went yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we could, uh, but that was a, a really good area. Um, so, um, so. And Butterfield, they started to settle East Wilton now, is that correct? Yes, yep. And so really, uh, there was like uh, all kinds of uh, uh, people that was coming in at, the, at, at that time. So the population was probably only uh, around 43 families uh, around uh, 1793. And ultimately, the, you know, in seven, uh, the, uh, quite increased as time went on. So was East Wilton settled before Wilton was? Yes, it was. Yep. Oh, wow. yep. So, yep. so uh, Samuel left uh, about th uh, seven years after he started the mill and started to develop that water power there. Wow. And actually, it was the commerce uh, area. The first store in Wilton was right there in East Wilton. And uh, sort of similar to, I think, uh, here in Farmington. I think uh, Farmington Falls was more the commas uh, for the area. Yeah, and then yeah. Farmington Falls, we all know, had the, the recent digs that they've done yeah. out there that it's all messed up, but there's all kinds of history right there at yeah. that bridge mm -hmm. of different people, different businesses, different mills, and so forth mm -hmm. that all developed in that yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we have a you know, rich, rich history in this area and stuff, and so the early settlers were uh, basically um, started settling up on Orchard Drive up there because, you know, that was free from frost, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a few a few extra Actually days is, in the yeah. spring and the, the fall, so they thought that it was a very valuable thing to t do when we we have a short growing season here in Maine. Do you know why I call that the Brown neighborhood? Yeah, uh, of course there was a, a, a Brown family was up there. I'm not sure which was the first one, but there was. Uh, Oh, I'm trying to think of his name. As far as uh, his his great grandson, I'm in contact with uh, the, uh, from Mass Massachusetts. He wants to really kind of find the old farm set. There was one called Benson Benson Brown, and uh, he would lived right there, corner of Boobie Road and yeah. uh, uh, no, Orchard Drive. Orchard Drive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Then we also have uh, there's a the small cemetery up by me where there's a revolutionary guy. I know his name is Rufus. I can't remember what his last name was. Was it Rufus Pratt? Maybe I can't. No, I have to go uh, look at no, the okay. stone. Well, anyway, as far as back, back to, in East, East Wilton, Wilton and, and uh, the town was established right there in East Wilton, as far as incorporated in uh, 1803. We have a, uh, it was right there on Main Street. The house is still there where the, 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 the old Butterfield house. And basically that was where Henry Butterfield lived. And th that was where the meetings, uh, where the town was incorporated there and, and at that house in East Wilton. So which house was that in East Wilton? That would be, um, I know right before you get to, if, as, as you're going towards Wilton, uh, for, turn by the bowling alley and you're going in, right before you get to Shelley's, there's a, a, a big house on the left. Okay. Uh, two, it's a two full story with chimneys on either end. Okay. So that's a, the Henry Butterfield, actually probably was the Samuel Butterfield house. Wow, I know which one it is. It's, yep. it's a gray house. It's a big one. It's for sale right now. Right, yep. yep. So to back up to as far as with uh, um, the name of the town, what are they going to name it? Yeah. So, you know, there was some pop, people thought it was going to be Harrytown, uh, but they thought that that wasn't really very good to kind of honor an, an, an Indian, Indian, yeah, Indian yeah, that yeah. caused troubles or whatever, but, you know, which um, then they, Tingsboro, but then there was this guy, uh, Abraham Butterfield, a different Butterfield, um, that he had came from Wilton, New Hampshire. Uh -huh. And so he was, he said, if you're, I'd be willing to pay the expense of uh, listing the town or re registering the town with the state or the pay for the co incorporation papers if we could name it Wilton. So that's how Wilton came in. So was it ever named Tingtown? Uh, it was a Tingtown Township, yes. Township. It was township. Uh, it was before, before the incorporation. It was sort of like the yeah, like the, the Ting Towns, Town's uh, per, the proprietors of the Ting Township, you know. So, uh, okay. so similar to Farmington here, it was uh, the proprietors of the Sandy River Valley proprietorship. So, uh, like Farmington didn't get a name till much later on. Same way with Wilton. I got gotcha. you. So, that, so we're actually named after New Hampshire. Exactly. Wow, that's yep. interesting. Yeah. <laughs>
Wow, I so, didn't know that at all. Yep, yep, so no. So there's a lot of, uh, so at that first town meeting uh, in 1803, they decided to do, uh, lay out some roads and build the first school. And the first school in, in Wilton was built up on Orchard Drive at the corner of Orchard Drive and Red Schoolhouse Road. In that field, uh, the Whedon's owned. There was a horse farm there. Yeah, yeah, I know and that was the, the first schoolhouse that was actually built in, uh, in, in Wilton. Wow. And, uh, and it, was, it, was, it was the only one for quite some years. And they really valued their, the education there. And uh, there was, they made up uh, school districts. They made up about 16, 18 yeah, 16, school districts. Yeah, 16, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, I mean, they were meeting in people's barns and stuff like that until they were able to build a um, schoolhouse. But um, there were several more, probably more influential uh, people that would actually want to send their, that were outside that district, which was called the a a Adams District, the school district. Um, that they, they sent their kids there. It was jo uh, Joseph Webster, who lived uh, in the neighboring um, district where the, w sent his child there, and also Samuel Butterfield sent his child up, uh, up to that area too. So. Wow, and they would go every day to the, to the, uh, to the, to, to the school? Or I, would, I would think so. The, the sessions were very much different than they were, um, than they are now as far as they had like a winter session and a yeah, summer session. Yeah, so sure. yeah, basically it would be a six week or eight week session. I haven't done that much research on that, but you know, to allow for the, the children to actually work in the fields. Fields, that's correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and, and at one time, I believe, like you said, si Wilton had 16 locations for schools. Some, yeah, somewhere, and like somewhere, somewhere around there, yeah, all over the, the neighborhood schools. You got to think as far as exactly. uh, being able to actually reach those areas. Yeah, they didn't like have that. school buses, so they had to go to one place, and if that happened to be a cluster of three or three farms that were there that the kids could get to it, that's what they yeah. did, the schooling. Yeah, you know, as far as they even, uh, they were, there's even records of uh, people being paid to actually, uh, families being paid to actually take kids to the, you know, with wagons and stuff like that, to the, the, wow. the, to the schools and stuff. Wow, so. wow. But, wow. no, it's quite, quite, quite an area. Do we know why they called it the Adams School District? Or? It was the, the Adams lived right next in that, that house that the Whedons lived in. It was, I, th I think it was John Adams that actually had lived there, so. So when did it become East Wilton? Is that a letter? Is um, that a story? That is a good question. That is a good question. When did he, I think um, sometimes they call it the upper mill, oh, uh, the upper, upper, uh, upper and lower. Okay. We were always referred to East Wilton was referred to the lower uh, area, lower uh, lower dam area, or the lower drain, lower Wilton stream, upper Wilton stream. That was often they were referred to that. So I think they they probably I mean. Well, Early on, they did that because t the area of Wilton and Temple was called North Wilton. Oh, I was going to ask you. So yep. there is a North. There really was there a was North, a, yep, North up there. Wilton. They call up the, the North, North Wilton up there. Yeah, because uh, I remember when we were doing the uh, town planning report years ago, and uh, uh, Jean, Jean Rand was on the committee, and mm -hmm. she says, you guys got to remember there used to be North Wilton, and there were all kinds of cellar holes up in that Varnum Pond, Temple, boundary between Wilton and so forth. She said then it was quite a thriving community. Yes. And the little research that I did on it said that as a, one of the first recessions that hit, that was so hard to farm up there, they all moved into Wilton to make, snooze, uh, make shoes. Ah. So that they had, and basically it went away. Because one time somebody said there was a hotel in North Wilton. Have you ever heard that? Uh, I'm not familiar with that up up in that area that much at all, but uh, I assume there would be that we do know there was a, a, a saw and grist mill out the outlet of uh, Varnum Pond, and that was actually um, sold. It was bought by some of the interest in East Wilton because they wanted to control the watershed. So uh -huh. what they did was basically bought the rights to that water, oh, that that mill, and then they basically just dismantled that mill so that it would be free-flowing water from that area. Wow, wow, so. interesting, interesting yeah. times. So Richard, we, we're gonna have you come on the show more often. So okay. what are some of the things we're gonna talk about in the future? Oh, what we can do is we can take a more in-depth look at some of the industries that were in yeah. Wilton and East Wilton and stuff like that. We, could, we can come back and look at uh, uh, the Holt Sickle Factory and, and, sh and look at some of the artifacts and some of the tools that they made, the hay knives and sickles and bread knives and stuff right there, right there in East Wilton. And then we have the 
the Walker Woolen Mill that we could talk about there in East Wilton and then move into Wilton. I mean, look, uh, we have Bass Shoe, yeah, the, the whole yeah, history yeah. of the Bass Shoe from, you know, 17, uh, what was it, probably 1876 yeah, or something that, like that, yeah, yeah. all the way up through here. And we got the Wilton Tannery Company and, and and there's just a, tons of industries I, I, and stuff. So, so will you come back on and do some more I shows? I sure will. That would be great sure. because I think maybe we'll do this for a monthly basis for a while because I also was told there were hatter, hatteries all along the Yes, screen. I think Seth Bass had uh, a, a hattery in 1820 yeah. right there on Main Street in, in Wilton. And, and uh, Harold Carcass one time told me that between the end of the outlet at Wilson Lake all the way through East Wilton, there were 40-some-odd businesses that used to operate off of that stream. Now maybe he, it, 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 over time it was over cool. over or over time. I think yeah, it sounds it was one of the hardest working rivers in yeah. Fr Franklin County. Super. So we're going to plan a schedule <laughs> that maybe about a month from now we'll go and talk a little bit some more about the history of Wilton and East Wilton. Hey, sounds good, Tom. Thanks Richard, for, thank thanks you. For so having this me. is great. I was fascinated. Oh, I mean, super. the time flew by just like that, which it always yep. does. But that was fascinating because I lived there. Yep. And I'm always fascinated by Wilton. I love the history of it. It's a wonderful community. And they were right because my house is on the old Keen Morrison Apple Orchard. Mm -hmm. And they had the cold air drainage. We saw that real quick this winter when it was below zero. It was six below zero uh, at uh, Salt and Pepper, Mary Bean's place. It was 14 below zero. By the time we drove home, it was one degree below zero. Just wow. in that difference in elevation yep. from the brook, the river, and so forth. So, yep. All right. So we're right. going to come back on. We're going to continue this conversation about the history of Wilton, East Wilton, and that area. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. This is Tom Saviello for Talking Maine. Thank you. Perfect.